Sheffield 57, the sponsor of this webcast, invites you to visit our re condominium residences. Good day, I'm Jennifer Malloy, and this is The Real Deal. At the top of the news, New York City foreclosures slowed somewhat in September. Developer Douglas Durst said he could put Condé Nast in the Hudson Yards towers. And the city's midtown vacancy rate is the second lowest in the country. That and more on The Real Deal webcast this week. But first, some highlights from this week's interview. On October 8th, the Associated General Contractors of America released a construction cost study that predicted costs would go up dramatically over the next two years. The Real Deal's Jen Benepe spoke to Dick Anderson, president of the New York Building Congress, about the report and his own predictions for how construction costs will affect New York projects over the next few years. There's been a decrease in home building activity in 2007, but according to the AGC's new report, 2007 non-residential construction was a banner year. Why is that? The market here has been strong both residentially and non-residentially. Nationally, uh, the uh, residential market has slowed down uh, uh, tremendously. Ken Simonson, ACG's chief economist, said the end of the column is coming soon. He's referring to the worsening slide in home building and turmoil in the credit markets that will affect non-residential construction. Do you agree with his assessment? Non-residentially, we're not seeing any end in sight. In fact, it's speeding up. For the full interview, click on the link below. And now for the news. A small sign of relief as New York City foreclosures fell in September from the previous month. However, compared to last year, the picture is still negative. Foreclosures increased 9.8% in September compared to 2006, according to RealtyTrack. In the Bronx, foreclosures increased 21.7% compared to last year. In Brooklyn, they increased 17.5%, and in Queens, they went up 9.8%. Compared to the previous month, however, city foreclosures dropped 37.9% in September. Developer Douglas Durst said he could put Condé Nast in a new Hudson Yards tower by 2015. The 1.5 million square foot tower is part of a West Side Rail Yard proposal by the Durst Organization and Vernado Realty Trust. It will be designed exclusively for Condé Nast. The publisher leases 700,000 square feet at four times square. When it comes to business, everyone still wants to be here. Midtown Manhattan's vacancy rate of 4.9% in the third quarter was bested only by Charlotte, North Carolina's 2.6%. That's according to C.B. Richard Ellis Group, Inc.'s U.S. National Office Vacancy Index. Nationally, the 12.6% downtown vacancy rate was the same as the second quarter. Developer Sheldon Salo is reportedly working with Fortress Investment Group to purchase $900 million of Harry Macklow's preferred equity debt. Salo is reportedly negotiating to pay a premium for the debt. If the debt goes unpaid, Macklow could lose the properties he used as collateral for $6.95 billion in loans. Those loans were used to buy seven Class A buildings. Some creative commercial real estate financing pushed the $22 billion acquisition of Archstone Smith through on October 5th. Joint buyers Tishman Spire Properties and Lehman Brothers received $9 billion from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. The privately held Irvine company took an equity stake in the transaction and with Tishman facilitated a 90% buyout of some of Archstone's California assets, reportedly worth $1.4 billion. Many other mergers and acquisitions are delayed or stalled due to the unsettled debt market. St. Vincent's Hospital released detailed plans for its new $700 million Greenwich Village Hospital Complex, the biggest neighborhood project in decades. A 21-story hospital would be built between 12th and 13th Streets, across the street from its old 7th Avenue building. Residents are concerned about the project's size, which calls for 450 units of luxury housing, 15,000 square feet of retail, and 365 hospital beds. A year after New York Yankees pitcher Corey Lytle's fatal plane crash into 524 East 72nd Street, repairs are nearing completion. Even though Lytle's plane struck the 40th floor, 100 of the Bel Air's 137 units sustained smoke or water damage, and 28 floors needed new interiors. The restoration took longer than expected because several dozen windows had to be custom made. No one said decongesting New York would be painless. The MTA reported it will need $767 million to pay for expansions and improvements and to accommodate new riders in time for Mayor Michael Bloomberg's congestion pricing plan. The authority said it would need $320 million for two new bus terminals in Queens and Staten Island. 
Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Real Deals webcast. Remember to click on the link below for this week's interview. Please join us every week for the latest in real estate news. I'm Jennifer Malloy, and this is The Real Deal.